Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah! Lili Nishmasimi Murasi Rusmus Mordechai. The last and final shear in Chicago, Beis Hashem, the next shear is going to be Tuesday morning in Eretz Yisrael. There won't be any shear I'm missing. This is actually the Monday shear. And Tuesday morning, I'm going to be back in Eretz Yisrael. Hopefully, if everything goes right, I really miss Eretz Yisrael. As much as Lincolnwood is Givaldic and I have a beautiful home here, it's a lot nicer than Eretz Yisrael, I can't wait to get back. I have a little... I have a much smaller learning room in my house in Eretz Yisrael, and it's Gan Eden, Pasha Gan Eden. I can't say the same about my, my room here in America. I don't know why. It doesn't have the same feel. Um, I just want to read a couple of emails here. That's our minug. This one is by Shabsi Kohen from Bitar. This week I was planning to write and show my appreciation for the amazing month of consistency, even a live example of this Yoimi never missing a day, no matter what the circumstances. It wasn't for the MDY team, especially Yosef, who manages to tackle the most complicated situations. I've never had such a spiritually connected holiday vacation season. Sorry from Purim, Shushan Purim, where in MDY it was business as usual, then even when busy getting ready for Yantiv, opening Gemara, on Erev Pesach, all the way through Chalamayid, getting up to learn, early to learn, before the family wakes up and a double shear on Erev Shvi. Me and all the others that I introduced them to are so proud and grateful to be part of this Torah empire. And then, close to the name of I was on an overnight trip with friends, found the quiet corner, the daf, Nun Beis, you're reading an email from someone who fell off the bandwagon, chose to follow the famous MDY tip and jump right back on to the daf that we're holding that day. But then, he's making a machah. The, the, the Koteret, how do you say Koteret in English? Subject is mecha, protest. I said, and, this, and he's quoting me, I believe almost every single person probably missed a daf or two. There's no such thing. It's almost impossible. I'm still in shock. <laughs> I've been with you for close to 250 daf, never missing a day because it's the yoimi. And I'm sure many, many others are with you on the same journey with the energy that you've changed, charged us up. Nothing's impossible. Okay, I hear. I was just trying to give the guy chizu. Come on. Everybody that's, that hasn't missed a day knows who they are, but I didn't want the guy to feel bad. So I said, everybody's like that. I myself didn't miss, but I was talking about uh... <laughs> Jack Warman on Zoom every day, doing the daf at his grandson's wedding right now, which is happening right now in Baltimore. So even, I'm thinking, even if this picture is posed, which it's not, but the guy brought a Gemara to his grandson's wedding, it's unbelievable. Because there's a lot of downtime when your family, the pictures, this, you know, okay? Givaldik, Mazel Tov Jack. David Sutton. Rebbe, I didn't have an opportunity to shake your hand and meet you, to thank you personally. However, learning live from Brooklyn with you every day, 169 consecutive days, here's another consecutive guy. Oh, since the emotional day, we started tying 169 days ago was tying us. Yushir brought Tyra to my life. It augmented the chesed I've been doing on Atzala for nearly 24 years. I knew I needed Torah in my life. The son of my hero, who's been doing the daf before it was in, his father, has made a Sima Shas many times. Below you'll see the random daf that you were in the middle of talking about when I photographed it. It's very moving. Best regards, David Sutton, F20. Here's the daf, the f- famous, it's going to go down in history, daf nun gimel in Yevamis, which we have over here from Sam Goldberg. He says, in response to how many people were at the shear, Yoli Duppelt went around at the shear and counted downstairs and upstairs. He counted 600 people downstairs and 170 people upstairs. I know quite a few people had turned around because they couldn't find parking. 770. And Duppelt is not even a Chabat scare. Wow. Jonathan Isquist, do we have time? I forgot to bring the clocks. So just go forever. We're still relieving the tremendous condition that occurred in New York. Thursday night, and we owe it to you. By the way, Chia, uh, when I go to New York again, it's going to be a deal. You're going to be there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now nah, you'll be on the groups. You already know. Sure, he's in the house. When I spoke to this chair, uh, they all asked where you're in town. Uh, they asked why did Ellie come to town since he came to give a daf. Then I realized that I feel sorry for those that don't get the MDY mishpacha. They don't understand why a chair would fly into New York just to give a shir. But if you're mishpacha, you get it immediately. So I'd like to thank you for flying in just to make the Mishpacha share beautiful words of Chizik. I'm sure to stay with everyone for a long time. I'd also like to thank you for the famous cliche pronounced cliche for the Panovitcher that you mention all the time. The daf has changed my life. 
I started reading the parish of Kitzur, what he's saying is that this week's parish, he was looking and he saw, he noticed all these things that we learned in Yuma and today's daf, and yesterday's daf is all about in Achim Mois Kedoshim. So really, we thank you for your wonderful family, so many hours that you spend daily preparing. Da 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 da. Yochanan, it's with Yishkoyach. Another one? Oh, I got three emails saying the same exact thing, so I just want to say real quickly this is from David Taub, and he says that I, when I turned the page and I said Jolly Joe Kraus, and the, the people in New York, they started laughing. So I said, most of the guys haven't been to Shir. Why would they laugh today? I've been saying it for a month. Jolly Joe, it happens to be today, I'm not going to say it anymore because there's a new one. Three people explained to me why they were all laughing. It's not that they weren't part of the Shir, but you mentioned a couple of times that people were laughing, therefore they must have not heard the Shir before, but I feel that actually they do hear the Shir, or rather purposely making the jolly laughing sound to imitate those sounds that are played on the edited recordings of the shear. Apparently, I never heard it. Apparently on the recorded shear, he does some sort of joke, uh, laugh, so everybody's going with it. It's not that they were new. Three people said it, so that must be the shot. Attached is a picture I managed to get with you pushing my way through the mob. Here it is. David, if you guys want to see what he looks like. Here. You know, you could, since you're the guest, you could just go down here, you could have this, because usually we have, huh? No, 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 you don't have to show, fine. And now, let me just, there's a, a new sponsor today. It's a very sad story. This is the guy that I was talking about. He's 59 years old. His name is Rebelio. Zechariah Levracha Ben Rebavrom, Eli Weinberg, Allah Shalom, he owned a pizza store in Brooklyn. He came to the Shear and he took a picture of the, we have a picture of the two of us. That was the last picture that he's ever taken. He went around showing people on Friday, hey, look, I took a picture. And then on Shabbos, he had a heart attack and was Nifter at the age of 59 years old. So the Boyer family is sponsoring, I think, for Shiva. They're very, very close. It says, a dear family friend who suddenly passed away this Shabbos at the age of 59. He loved MDY and was proud to be part of this amazing Nafiyam Yishir. Wow. It's very, it's unbelievable. I, I say this all the time. You have to hop around. Nobody knows that they're going to live tomorrow. What? Whoever was here in Shir last night knows. Here, so go try to find, ah, forget it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll show it to you afterwards. It was on the, it was a picture last night. Oh, because you guys, yeah, you didn't, you, you, there's no screen here, so you can't see. We don't know. He's 59 years old, a healthy guy. He worked out. He was in good health, heart attack, and bye-bye. Nobody knows that they're going to live forever. And therefore, Chaparain today, we're holding Daphne Vav, Amir Aleph, all the way on the top. Echad HaMa'ara Vechad HaGoymer Kana. So, missing other sponsors. oh, good point. <laughs> a lot of other sponsors. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, we have a lot of monthly sponsors. Koyal is sponsored by Anonymous for Shiduchim Rizm Mishpacha. Also, uh, Paris of the Walkenstein family. Imein Kemach, Ein Torah. Imein Torah, Ein Kemach. There's a new one. We're going to have to hear that for a whole month. Reboi say, Imein Kemach, Ein Torah. Paras HaChodesh by the Lach and Lebevik families, Lakewood, New Jersey, because the Torah is the best gula. Paras HaChodesh, as it's to Aaron Zatzlacha, and to you, and the video editor of Zatzlacha continuation, not missing a shir, Lizech and Nishmas, Rabbi Rom Yitzchak ben Binyamin. Paras HaChodesh, anonymously, Lili Nishmas, Chayo Bas Yosef. And finally, Paras HaChodesh, as a Kosha Toiv to Hashem, and as a Zatzlacha for continued health and bracha, Shkoyach for all the sponsors. Echarem Ma'ara, Bechra Goimer. So the mission is talking about all types of Bia and if it, the Yibam was Beshagig, Bemezid, Ba'inas, Beratzen, Yerkaina, Yevama, then the Mishnah goes into saying that Hara, which we discussed in great length, what exactly is it and how it is, it's the start of the act, that's enough to be Kaina. Now, the Gemara says now, my Kana, what exactly a Kaina with well, if we're going to just base it on these words, Echadam Ma'ara, Echadam Ma'ara would mean that we're talking about that part of the Mishnah, which is the beginning of the act, but Rashi says that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about an inferior, an inferior Bia, meaning something that came from a Shaygig, or Aynas, 
Like we explained, the Gemara, how is it possible? Oynas, he was thinking about this, and the Yavama forced herself, the whole thing, shaygig. He didn't have, the point is he didn't have intent for the mitzvah. Not a ma'ara, because ma'ara, we already said that it's 100% a good bia. So we're talking about an inferior bia. My kana, with an inferior bia, what, do you, what, what could you do already if you're yavam? Rav Omar kana lakol, ushmul Omar, loy kana el dvarim ha'amurim ba'parasha. Kana lakol would mean that if he is a kayan, let's say he had an, this bia grua, it was shagig, and then he went on a trip. He said, I'll see you later, I'm going to yeshiva, I'll come back in three years. Could she eat truma during that time? That's what we're talking about, truma. Rav says yes. She's 100% a wife, just like a regular wife of a kayan could eat truma. Fine. Ushmul Amar, Amur Only the things that have to do with the yavam. That what? If a person's brother dies without children, he's miyavim. The yavama, he marries the yavama. He has five brothers. This guy that just died left 10 million dollar Yerusha. Who gets the whole Yerusha? The yavam. So he doesn't have to do a regular complete bia. It could be also a bia grua. So the Pasuk says over here, this is chart one, Daphne Mbav. This is also something that we learned by the whole sugya. It teaches us that the one that steps in to, to make a name for his brother and to be miyav and the wife, he becomes. You could, I don't know, no? Oh, yeah. Yaakov HaShem Machiv. He'll be instead of the brother and he gets everything. He gets the whole Yerusha. Remember, we discussed the Chalitza, according to some, Ashkenazim, Minhagim, you get 50%. Okay. Ule Patra Min Hayibum. Whatever this act is, it's enough to say that the Yibum occurred. And if he dies without children, and he has children from another, he has children from another wife, she's allowed to get married to somebody else, and if he divorced her with a get, after that inferior bia, that's enough, she doesn't require get, she doesn't require chalitza, sorry, he gave her a get, doesn't require chalitza, okay. So, Bikitzer is considered a good yibum, in hilchas yibum, but not in hilchas nisuim. He didn't marry her. It's not 100% a marriage. Why? Because it was an inferior Yibo. So therefore, she doesn't eat truma according to Shmuel. So we're going to have a discussion here. What exactly, how exactly is it? Says the Gemara, and this is shot number one. We're going to say the reverse soon. That what? Minan is suin, What happened there? There's a guy that was married 100% to a woman, and he dies. Now the brother comes, steps in instead of that guy. So everybody's going to agree that he stepped in instead of his brother. And just like the brother, well, the brothers. And the only time you have Yibum is brothers from a father. So if the brother from the father is a Kayan, you're also a Kayan. So you're both Kayanim. So the wife was eating Truma anyway. But there's no Shiloh when it comes you, you, you inherited a wife that was already Nesua, right? So let's just go back a second. There's a thing called Erosin, there's a thing called Nesuin. Erosin is where you give a ring, what today we call Kiddushin, at the Chuppah, but in those days it was done way before the Nesuin. It could be even a year before. And then there's Nesuin, which he brings her into his house, and he finishes off the marriage. So min anesuin, if it's complete nesuin, the reakol achla, then she gets to eat truma. Do havas ka'achla minkara. She was married to the brother, and the brother is a kayan, just like he's a kayan, because they have the same father, so she was eating truma. So of course she's going to continue eating truma. Ki pligi min erosin. And the Gemara later is going to say the exact opposite. That min erosin, everybody's going to agree that what? It's no good. She never eats truma. There's going to be a machlaikis in nesuin. Okay. That's, those are the two pshatim we're going to have in the Gemara. Now what, what's the Again, Ruvain marries a woman. He doesn't marry. He gives her a ring. That's called Erison. Then he dies without children. 
There is Yibum with Erisin. You have to be, you have to do Yibum even though they didn't finish off the marriage. It was just Erisin. Rav Amar Echelas. She still gets to eat Truma. Because even though it's an inferior, inferior Bia, what he did today, obviously, if he went ahead and did a regular Yibum, she's his wife, he's a Kayin, she gets to eat Truma. The problem is that he was a Shaygig. He thought he's with his original wife, he this, whatever it was. It wasn't a real, halachically correct Bia, it was an inferior Bia. And therefore we have a Shaila. Rav says, she eats Truma, Shmuel Omar, Kirabi Rachmana, when the Torah says Shagig is like Mazid and everything is good, you can't be better and stronger than the Yavam. The Yavam, the guy that died, he was only Arison. And Arison only doesn't get Truma. If you're engaged, not engaged, what we call engaged, but engaged of the Torah, Arison, you don't get to eat the Truma. So why should the Yavam who steps instead of his brother be stronger than the Yavam himself? Ba'azir Shmuel Tamei says the Gemara in Shmuel is like his, his own reasoning. Domer Rav Nachman of Shmuel. Kol Sha'abal Machil Yavam Machil. When the original guy that died, he could feed his wife, his Arusa, Truma. So the Yavam who steps in when he does an inferior Bia could do the same thing. V'chol Sha'ina Ba'al Machil. But if the original guy does not give truma, like in a case when they're only erusin. Yavam in machil, when the yavam has, you have to stick in in parentheses, when it is in an inferior yibam, then there's no truma. Don't fall asleep on me, I'm telling you, it gets more exciting tomorrow. <laughs> Meisme, no, there are a few interesting sugis here. But you gotta just say, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad. Sometimes yesterday we had limudim, you know, come on, limudim is, what? Yeah. Oh, oh, Bas Koyen. Yeah, so it would be the reverse, probably. I mean, she doesn't, she's not going to lose out. You mean, yeah. I don't know. It's a good child. I hear, but... Yeah, okay. We're actually going to talk about similar things to what both of you were talking about. Says the Gemara. Mace Who's talking learning over there? Shemak. Yvaldik, yeah. But over here, no, no. That's downstairs, not here. Zogdi Gemara, Meisvei. Bas Yisrael pikachas shenis arsa lekoyim pikeach. So we're going to talk about this brisa, so remember it. We're going to bring it again. And there's going to be a kasha later when we switch the pshat around. You have a Yisrael, Yisraelis, who's, she has all her marbles. Shenis arsa lekoyim pikeach. The kids are regular shidduch. This is a big chiddush to me at least, but I looked it up in the Afkofi and that's what the mission says. We, when we get there, we'll try to understand it. We know that halachically a deaf mute is considered a shaita. Times the Gemara, people that couldn't hear, couldn't speak, so they couldn't, they were illiterate, so the shaita. Over here is very interesting. Over here is a person who started out his life healthy. So he knows that he could read, write, talk, everything, and then he became a cheresh. Somehow that turns him into a shaita. Okay. So again, he gets engaged as a pikeach, normal, and then before he was able to finish off the the, the nisuin, he became a cheresh. So what is that called? A biagrua. When he's a shaita and he's and he's boil her, that's a bia grua. That's not a good one because uh, he happens to be a shaita. So Rashi brings that the reason is, and the Gemara talks, we have to make a when you have nisuin because maybe this cheresh will get engaged. And when, he, when he's engaged, she can't eat truma. So also when they're married, nisuin, we made Xavier that they can't eat truma. She can't eat truma. Meis v'nafla lifnei yavam cheresh echeles. So if the original guy dies, and listen to this, when she's ma- when she's with him as an arusa and a sua, she doesn't get to eat. If he dies, 
and she, she falls now to Yibam. He died without children. So she goes to the brother. Now all of a sudden she could start eating. What does that mean? That the Yavam is more powerful than the original guy. Okay. Why? Because this, the Cheresh, who doesn't have Das, that's a Bia Grua. So it's like, but once, once she falls, the Yibum, and the Yavam is a Cheresh, listen to this. It's a tremendous Chiddush what's going on there. She's married to a Cheresh, she can't eat. But she falls to a Yavam Cheresh, she could eat Rumor. Why? Think about it. Because Yibum, you could acquire Yavama with Bishagig. You don't have to have intent. So a Cheresh is like a person who has no intent. So he's going to acquire Yibum, but the husband not. So you see that the Yavam in this case is stronger than the husband. According to Rav, this makes sense because even a Biagrua could allow you to eat Truma. According to Shmuel, that says that a Biagrua, an inferior Bia, does not allow the woman to eat Truma. So I come over here, she's allowed to eat Truma with the Bia of a Cheresh, which is a Biagrua. You're right. We have to amend it a little bit and stick in a word. And please remember this for later on, because the Gemara is going to go back to this and just as a hint. The Gemara is say, oh, like we answered before. This is the answer that we said before, right over here. That what? It's a major problem, but the, pro- the thing is that nothing fits in according to anybody 100%. So Shmuel is going to have to be like a little bit and say, hey, ma, his big, the kansach in his charge. He wasn't able to do nesuin until he became a cherish. In a truma, then there is no truma. Kanas here, this part. But if he actually got married to her, okay. So the original husband is not worse. If he was able to finish off the marriage, then she could eat. So too the brother, who's the yavam. And he inherited a woman who was already eating truma, so she continues to eat truma with him. And he died, and she fell liibum. Okay. Because now she's coming from a much better place. She's coming from a place of Nesuin, where she already ate truma. Great. Umay bezu. But you know what the problem is? We said that a yibum, yibum is stronger than marriage. We just said it's not stronger than marriage. We just said. Marriage, she eats truma, and yibum, she eats truma. So then, what, why is yibum stronger than marriage? Umay bezu, the ilu bal cherish mi kara loyechelas. Because we're going something that we didn't speak about, maybe or hinted to it, spoke a little bit about it. That if the original guy, the husband that died, the original guy during engagement during erison, she doesn't eat truma. Bil yavum cherish mi kara achla. But Yavam would eat. She would eat if she was Misyab. Vigid Ami. And some say the reverse. This is what I warned you about. We're going to flip it. Min Erusin de Rakhola That makes sense. The what? If they're just engaged, Erusin, then she doesn't get to eat. Everybody, even Ravel, agree. She doesn't get to eat Truma. They're not really married. No. No Truma. Oh, where am I holding? Anybody? Because when she was with the husband in Erison, she didn't get to eat. The whole machloikas is she was married to the first guy completely and she ate truma. Now the guy died and she falls li'ibam. Could she continue eating truma? Rav says, Rav says, listen, she was eating as a, as a married woman. Now she fell to She continues eating. Shmuel says, no. Why? Because at the end of the day, how did she get to the Yavam? Through in an inferior Bia. That's not enough to eat. It's like we said before. The Yavam could acquire the Yavama with an inferior Bia only for certain things. For Yerusha. 
but not for Truma. Omar Rav Nachman, Omar Shmuel, the Gemara asks, from Shmuel himself. Rav Nachman says in the name of Shmuel, we're talking about in the Shita Shmuel. Kol Shabal Machil, Yavam Machil. Whatever the husband could do, so could the Yavam do. Shmuel says this. You hear the problem? Nachal. Shmuel says, she was married. It's, this is a Chiddush to me. I don't know what you guys think. She's married to Reuven. She's eating Truma. He's a Kayan. The brother is also a Kayan. She fall, the husband dies, she falls, leave him to Shimon. No, she can't eat Truma now. But why? Even Shmuel himself says that the Yavam takes over where the husband left off. And if the, the Yavam let her eat Truma, so she should also eat Truma. The, the original husband let her eat Truma, so the Yavam should also be able to let her eat Truma. What changed? So you, you have to say that that's not exactly what Shmuel said. Again, because, and everybody explains this, because... There's such a chak here, Rav and Shmuel, that in Shmuel, we just kind of have to figure out what Shmuel says, even though we have to push things around a little bit. Ema, kol bia shabal machalba, yava machalba. Any type of bia, a good one, a real one, then allow the wife to eat truma. Yava machalba. Bechol bia sheina bal machalba, but we're talking about a bia grua. It's like a beer without das. There's no kavana. He's not allowing her to eat true with it. Mei Now we're going back to the price that we said before. For all the new guys, I apologize. It gets better. By the way, Shkoyach, I'm saying, you have a flight in an hour, so you have all the stuff. Don't forget about us. Mei Svei. Bas Yisrael, Bikach, Pikach. That's the Gemara. We, we mentioned this already. Yeah, this is a freebie. You have a normal woman who got engaged to a Kayan who's normal. And before he was able, first he did Erusin and step two is Nisun, but he wasn't able to do Nisun and he became a deaf mute, which halachically renders him not capable, like a Shaita. She doesn't get to eat Truma. Mace. But this guy who's a deaf mute, I don't know what happened exactly, maybe they have a degenerative disease or something. Two brothers, suddenly in midlife, they both went deaf mute. These are all stories that are but not like, we don't expect them to be real. And this Yavim Cherish did what? A Yibam Garua. Why? Because he's a Cherish. And every bee of his is a bee agrua, oicheles. She could eat truma. Now, once again, ubizu The original guy who died, she couldn't eat truma. The second guy who's also deaf, but he's a yavam, she could eat truma. Bishleim alarav, mitaretz, kiditaretz, mitkar. Now, according to Rav, she's supposed to be like an arusa. You have a bee agrua. And L'chaira, why, why, could she eat? why could she eat? So we're going to say that what? Like we answered before. Remember, I told you to remember before. It's like a chesuri mechser kind of thing. We were missing some words. and We're talking about, no, that he got married to her. It was, it was like nisuin, and that's why she eats. El Shmuel, Kashia. But according to Shmuel, she shouldn't be eating now. She shouldn't be eating truma. It's be a grua. Kasha. Okay, it's not a, the worst. Again, because everything is a tchakesh, it's only a kasha. It's not a tiyufta. It's not the end of the world. Every single time that the Gemara says kasha, almost every single time, the Gemara says kasha, the article is going to say that it's not as strong as a tiyufta. Tiyufta is very strong. Kasha is, you get around it. Tana Rabbana. Bas Yisrael, Pikachash, and Esav, Sela, Koen, Pikeach. We have a normal woman who got engaged to a normal Kayan. And we said, why? Remember what the reason is? Gzeira, we have to be geyser, a woman who is married. Atu, a woman who's not married. Anisua, atu, anarusa. Now listen to this. So we go to the next chart. No, it's not a big deal. No, 
Right. Oh. So let's see. That's exactly what the Gemara is going to discuss. V'koyin ki yikne nefesh, ki yikne nefesh ki yin kas boi hu. Yoichal boi. V'yilid beisoi heim yoichlu v'lachmoi. So, from the Pasuk, and we, we have to, I put it in parentheses, instead of Yoichlu, we pronounce it Yaachilu. That the son lets his mother eat Truma. If she has a son, a Kayan, she gets to eat Truma. Now, it's talking about, now, Noilad la Ben, Oichelas. If she has a son, she eats. Meis haben, and the cheresh guy, the guy that's a deaf mute, the shaita, is still alive. Rebbe Nassan Oimer Oicheles, she gets to eat because of her husband that's still alive. The Chamerim Ein Oicheles. If the son dies, now does she have the right to still eat? Machlaikis. My time with Rebbe Nassan. How do we explain Rebbe Nassan? Omer Rabba. This is extremely difficult to understand. I'm going to let you ask the question before the Gemara asks. Omar Rava, since she was eating for five years when her son was alive, now that the son passed away, she should continue eating. No, what's the question? What about the husband? The husband also. She could eat truma truma as long as he's alive. Once he dies, it stops. How come by the husband we don't say shikvar achla? She, she ate for 30 years. She, you don't say that. As long as the so how come by the sun you would say such a svar? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make so much sense. It doesn't make any sense that I don't understand the havamin at all. A Yisraelis who married a Kayan and was eating truma all those years, and the minute he dies, that's it, it's over. No, but according to your logic, she should continue eating forever because once she starts, she shouldn't stop. Hello, even the miss. But obviously, once the husband dies, then the Gdusha dissipates, unless, of course, she has a child from him, which most Kohanas do, and therefore they continue eating forever. I don't understand what you're saying, Rabbi. Unless you go into like, oh, it's the Rabbanon and the Rabbanon. Okay, fine. Different things. No, Rabbi Nassim argues on the whole concept that we set up until now. He completely argues. And he just says that a, a deaf mute, who's a shaita, who gets married, he has the ability to, to let his wife eat truma. So then what's the question? And the obvious question is, then what, what are you talking about a son here? What does the son have to do with anything? It says that the only reason why she's eating is because she has a son. It's not the pshat. The pshat is because she has a husband who's deaf mute, and that's enough to eat. We said the whole pshat is... A gzera, we, he doesn't hold this whole gzera. Great bomb question. Why are you talking about a son? He says the Gemara, I'll tell you why we're talking about a son. Mishum Rabbanon. That what? Rabbanon agree. Over here there'll be Maida. If she has a son, she could eat. Okay, that's why we stuck in the, the word son. In fact, she doesn't need a son. She could eat just because of the husband. That's Reb Nassim. Chacham says if she has a husband, that's not enough to eat. But if she has a son, she could eat because of the son. That's why it says son. It says Gemara, if that's the whole point, then why does Reb Nassim wait all the way to the end of the Mishnah to argue? Let him just say right away in the beginning. If the Cherish gets married, Chacham say she doesn't eat Truma, he's going to say you do eat Truma. Right away, say your argument. Why are you, why are you waiting until there's a son? Listen to this. It's a, he's polite. He didn't want to interfere. They were in the middle of talking. So he waited until they finished speaking, which by the way, is probably some of the best advice in marriage and everything else. Just listen. It's kedai to listen. In everything, in business, right? You listen to the other person, don't cut them off. You listen to they finish the sentence, and then you go. So that's what he did here. Says the Gemara, wait a minute. It, that doesn't fit in, though. listening. I did a charge, so you don't have to look back. Look what it says here in chart three. I'm just reading from the Mishnah in blue. According to you, that he's being polite, 
What should it say? Meis haben chacham emoyim remeinu yecheles. First, should go blue, and then Reb Nassan, who's being polite and waiting until everybody finishes, then he says this shita. No, in the mission, the way it's written, Reb Nassan interrupts. He says his thing. Meis haben. What happens if the son dies? I say, you eat. So you hope shot doesn't fit. You're telling me that he's being nice. He, he's a listener and he's being polite and he talks only after everybody's. Then the question is, if he already interrupted them. So he should have interrupted them all the way in the beginning of the Mishnah, where they said, if a cherish gets married, Chacham say she doesn't eat truma, and according to Reb Nassim, you do eat truma because there's nothing to do with the son; it just has to do with the cherish getting married. It's enough to give your wife truma. Kashia again. These are all good questions. Bottom line is we don't have a grape shot, so we have to be doichek a little bit anyway. So we'll be doichek in this. So it says in the Mishnah that all these things that we said. When it comes to Yavama, again, Yavama, you can be kind of her, Bahara, you can be kind of her, Bashaigig, Bemezid, all these things. Nothing stops the Yavama. So the same Allah applies if somebody's with a sister or his mother, all, all that rise. Hara is your over Isser, your over Bashaigig, not over, but you become Pasal, all these things, Bashaigig, it doesn't matter how. Now we're turning to the Vav base. Sponsored, we have a new sponsor today. Is that what, that's how it goes? Every single day? It's very annoying, Yosef. I never heard it. Wow. One time is a joke, every day. That's why they were doing it. So maybe I'm thinking back now, they weren't really laughing. They go, ooh, okay, I got it. Can't read my own handwriting. The gold, I knew I shouldn't have done this. Okay, I don't know the, it's by Moshe Horn. Uh, kids are in honor of Jolly Joe Krause and family, and if I could read my handwriting. When I get there, just roll. Oh no, in honor of Moshe Donut, I think it is. Yeah, this, what do you mean, These people have that name. Maybe you're not allowed to laugh at these things. Guy has the <laughs> Mati Donut. Mati Donut. There you go. Mati Donut. Okay. Mati Donut. There you go. What a. Kale Twins. He has funny friends, uh, Maisha Horn. He only, only sponsors for people that have names that people made fun of them their entire life. That's how it goes. Zogdi Gimaro. Rav Shesha said a grape shot, and it, w- oh, in honor of, anonymously, okay, Rav Shesha said a pshat, and Rashi says, Vanarinu is like, he enlightened our eyes, here in Nenu, we could learn it from our Mishnah, now, I believe, you see over here, there's an Aleph, right by the Ashes Yisrael. In other words, his Pshat, is, his, his Halacha is good, but his Raya, the Gemara doesn't like the Raya. It's interesting. The Gemara slugs up the, the, the Raya, but the Gemara doesn't go away from what he said. It goes like this. Ashes Yisrael Shenenza, a woman who was violated by, by a, strang- a stranger. Avapi, in other words, against her will. Incredible halacha, but it gets even worse. And that is that a woman, a Yisraelis, is married, she's happily married, she walks in the park, some chaya violated her. She, when her husband dies, she can't marry a kain anymore. That's it. Now let me ask you something. Let's say she's married to a kain, and somebody violates her. What's the halacha? Have to get divorced. You hear this? If you came just for this, it was worth it. You hear this halacha? It's the saddest halacha. A woman is married, happily married. She loves her husband. She's married to him for 40 years. Some mishugana, rasha, marusha, did something terrible to her. They have to get divorced. And if they're together, he gets malchus. That's the next sugi. It's unbelievable. Because he's a kayan. And a kayan is a kayan. A kayan can, can't be married to, to somebody that has... Any sort of Shem Tuma, Shem Zayna, whatever it is. Let's see the Sugya. Every day, every time. 
Every, every helam. Says the Gemara. But this is a different halacha. I jumped too fast. Because I was so excited about this halacha. It's a sad halacha. Hey, she's Yisrael, Shenensa. She's married to Yisrael and she's Yisraelis. Okay. So now, after her husband dies, the Shidduch market shrinks a little bit. She cannot get married to a Kayan. And this is a big Chiddush. She's allowed to stay with her husband. Why is she allowed to stay with her husband? Because the only time you have to get divorced from her husband is if she did it willingly. She had an affair. But over here, it was against her will. She's allowed to stay with her husband. However, she's Psulukuna. And what do we see in our Mishnah? That what? It says that if the Yibum, the Yivama had a Shaygig and a Mezid, right? It's all good for Yibum. Shaygig and Mezid is good for Yibum. And also, in the same Allah of Shaygig and Mezid also applies to the Arayas. My Vechain, says the Gemara. This is Rav Sheish is talking. My love, Loishna Vishagig, Velishna Vimazit. That part of the Mishnah doesn't matter if it's Shagig, it doesn't matter if it's Mazit. Now there's another part that talks about Hara, the beginning of the act, the first moment. That's enough for Yibum. No, but let's say we're talking about Shagig Mazit. Veloishna Bainis Velishna Viratsim. Viktani Psala. It creates a psal for Kuhuna. Even though she's a Shagegis. Shalai Baratzan, it makes her psala. She can no longer be married to a kain. Sigmar, no, that's not the pshat. You learn, learn wrong pshat. Loi, my vachain, hara. That if she has willingly had a relation with somebody, but only for a moment, it was the beginning of the act, that's enough to make her apostle to kahuna. Because hara is enough to apostle. Sigmar, hara, the man. Ilim with arayas. So we're talking about the Mishnah is saying that if there's hara in a rice, it's like Yibum. Because the Mishnah, we're in Mesech Yivamas. The Mishnah started saying that by Yivama, hara works, Shagig works, Meza works. And then the Mishnah says, the chain and also the same Allah applies by a rice. Shouldn't it be reverse? Yesterday we're talking about that we learn Yivama from a rice, not a rice from Yivama. So that doesn't make sense, says the Gemara. Hara the man, he lived a rice, the rice, he'll finish Yivama. All the Arayas, a sister you learn from Yivama. Other Abba, Yivama, Yafinu, Arayas. Dika Arab, Arayas, Ksiv. Whatever that means. The whole thing we had yesterday. Elamai Vachain, Ashalai Kedar Kedar Arayas. So if a woman had unnatural Bia, Shalai Kedar then she becomes puzzle to Kahuna. She's, she can't marry a coin. Says Gemara, Adar Abba, Ikar Mishka Ve'isha, Arayas, Ksiv. Again, you're learning this from, from a Yavama? Look, by Yavama we said that you kind of Yavama, Shalaki Darko also. And from that I learn Arayas. The opposite. Yavama you learn from Arayas, not Arayas from Yavama. Same question we had a second ago. Ad Rabbi Yikimish Kivi Isho of Arayas Kiv. Elamai Vachain. Ashalaki Darko the Chayvi Lavim. That what? That if you have a Grusha, which she was. Only Shaloi Kedarka, she's not allowed to be married to Kayan, she can't eat Truma anymore. That's what we're talking about. We didn't know that part. We didn't know that Shaloi Kedarka works by Chai Vilavim. Chai Vilavim is like a Grusha to Kayan. Almar to Kayan Gadol, that we didn't know, that's the Chiddush here. Omar Rav. Eishes, Kayan, Shenenza. Talking about Kayanim, Kayanim. Tomorrow, Be'ez Hashem, I'll be in our show, back to Birkas Kayanim, back to all the good stuff that Kayanim have. Ah! It's, a, it's, it's not funny, but it's incredible to watch. In America, people take it so seriously. The Brooks Kahana, and they take their kids, and they go under the towels, and they call them from this. It's beautiful. Right? So we're so used to it every day, every day. Aishas, Koyin, Shinenzo. You guys know, but you know, you can see Vamas. I'll just repeat the joke I said like probably three weeks ago. Guy, but you never heard it. He <laughs> didn't hear it. That's a famous joke. The guy tells his father, his father came to visit him in the Mir Yeshiva. So he goes to Shachas with his father. He says, you know, Ta, over here they do Birkas Gehanim or Rosh <laughs> He basically told his father he's never a minion yet. He just showed up. Okay. Amar Rava. Eishas Kain Shinenza. Ba'ala Laika Le'am Mishum Zayna. This is the sad halacha right here. You have a wife of a Kayan. 
who was violated by a stranger. So her husband must divorce her immediately. And if her husband doesn't, he says, I can't. What do you mean? We have children together. We have Omish Pacha. We're married for 40 years. I'm not divorcing her. Bala loika leo mishim zayna. She has a lach of a zayna. Now, obviously, she didn't do any znos. It wasn't willingly. But in terms of a kayan, the Pasuk says about her, she, they can't be married. The same thing, let's say, we, we, this I, everybody knows already, that if a kayan divorces his wife, he can never remarry her. Even though Yisrael has a mitzvah to remarry his divorced wife before she marries somebody else, a kayan cannot. So there's sad things about being a kayan. Uh, in the hotel on, on Pesach, there's a kayan, he's a, you know, a bacher, a bacher, he's in his 30s. So I said, no, how's it going with, with Shiduchim? He told me that certain, certain Shiduchim, they're not available for him because of it being a kite. Okay, he went into the whole, the whole uh, thing. Yeah, it goes together. Being, being more Kaddish brings more responsibilities, more, more, uh, more humorous, or whatever you want to call them. Omar Rava, Eishas Kain Shinenza, Bala Leiko Leh, Mishum Zayna. Mishum Zayna in, Mishum Tumalai. Now, Tumah, we're not talking about the word Tumah, like uh, Tameh, t- touching a sheret. Over here, Tumah, let me see if I have the Pasuk. Yeah, here's a Pasuk, it's chart four. V'nistra of hinitma. By a saita, we use a Lashen of Tumah, which means a Lashen of, 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 what's the word in English? What does the article say for Tumah in this case? To be the, def- what? Defilement. Defilement. Oh. That's yeah, a little bit too fancy for me, Panavitcher. But defilement. It doesn't mean your tame. You have to go to the mikvah, Tuma. It means she was defiled through a isurbia. That's what it means. So you use the word Tuma. So ask the Gemara what? She's only a Zaina, but not a Tmeya. She, she, she became Tame through that uh, bad guy. Say, says the Gemara, Ema Afmishum Zaina. So now the Gemara says this to Isurim. This Nus. Not Znus. She's called a Zaina, she's called a Tmeya. And for that, he's, he gets Malchus. Seems like almost he gets double Malchus. Twice. Masiv Rebzeira Vihila Nispasa Asura. So it says in this Pasuk, Vinisra Vinitma Ve'ed Eimba Vihila Nispasa. Nispasa means that it wasn't forced. In other words, she did it willingly. Since she did it willingly, that's why. She's considered a saita, and he brings it to the base amigdash. They they get let her drink from the water, and she might explode, might not explode. But it's because it wasn't forced. Ha nispasa. If she was forced, she was violated against her will. Muteres. And if you look at the pasuk, I did it in green. Vihi. This Israelis has this heter. But not a kohen, not not a kohen, it's not a woman married to a kohen. Says the Gemara. Okay, so let's just stop here for a second. Let's do this again. It says in the pasuk that Israelis that was forced, that wasn't forced. She's a saita, but if she was forced, she's not. And from that we're being medayik that a kayan who was forced is also. Yeah, again. It says in the Pasuk, what makes a saita? If she did it willingly, her husband said, don't be misyachet with another man. She went willingly, she was misyachet. She's a saita, she's tmeya. Meaning that if it was against her will, the guy grabbed her, she's not a saita. She could stay with her husband. The, this pasuk in, in Saita, you're not allowed to be with the Saita. But if it was against her will, she's allowed to be. But that only applies to Israelim, not to Kahanim. But the Gemara says that's not a lav. That's an assay. It's an issue that comes from a, from, you should do. Here. Vihi loy nispasa, ha nispasa, she could be married. She could. That's a positive. If she's Israelis, she could be married. What is that, a negative or a positive? It's a, neg- it's a positive. She could stay married to her husband if she's Israelis, if she was forced against her will. But a, kay- a kayhenes, so married to a kayen, she cannot. So that's a negative that you learn from a positive. A negative that you learn from a positive, you don't get Malchus. To get Malchus, it has to be a lav, it has to be a negative. The Torah has to say, 
do not be married to this woman. Over here it says, you could be married to this woman if she's a Yisraelis. And from that I learn that if she's a Kohenna, she's married to a Kohenna, you cannot be married. But that's a negative that was learned from a positive, and you don't get Malchus. The Lava of Machlal, I say, I say. Omar Rabba, I call Hoyu Bechlal Zaina. No. You, you learn wrong shot. We don't learn it from this Pasuk. We have another Pasuk that's actually a negative. And therefore she gets Malchus. That what? Hakolay Bechlal Zaina, Kishbar Lachal, Kosov Gabi, Ashes Israel, Vilan Esposa Asuro, Hon Esposa Mutares, Miklal, Ashes Koyen, Kedakayim, Kaimo. There's another pasuk, Akolei Bechloi Zaina. And then this pasuk is just saying that a Kayan remains as is, with the original Isser of a negative. And therefore, if there's original Isser of a negative, you get what? Malchus. Some say, before he said that if you remain with a Kayan who remains with his wife, who is Nenas, he, she's a Zaina. Now we're saying no. It, she's Tomei. And now the Gemara is going to ask the reverse question which we asked before. Mishum Tuma in, Mishum Zaina loy. what about Zaina? Yes, before we said Zaina, but what about Tuma? Now we're saying Tuma, what about Zaina? And now the Gemara doesn't answer, yes, you're right, you get two Yisurim. Says Gemara, Alma Bainus like Karina Be Zaina, which makes a lot of sense to us, no? You can't call a woman a Zaina, really. I mean, according to this Gemara, it makes sense. You're going to call her a Zaina when she had nothing to do with it? She wasn't willing? She wasn't a willing party. So, she is Tame because at the end of the day, physically, she, she was defiled, uh, whatever it's called, defilement, but she's not a Zayn. She wasn't forced. Asura, she did it willingly, then she becomes also her husband. But if she was forced, Asura, and there's another woman called a woman married to Kayan, she's Kayan. Yeah. The same question that we had before. It says, Rav, no, they're all within the parish of Achayush. They're anyways also. Because of the Pazak Achayush Hutama. Yeah, should I repeat it or it's good? Was the, I think the island was giving me like these, these faces. Shall I repeat? Nachamo. Yeah. The Pasuk says, just real quickly, because there's nothing else going on today. The Pasuk says, but it's very interesting. The Pasuk says that a, if a husband tells his wife, don't seclude yourself with that man, and she goes and she secludes herself willingly, they can't be married anymore. Meaning, if it wasn't willingly, he forced her to be secluded, then they could remain married. But a Kayan's wife cannot. But the fact that the Torah says that if it was against her will, they could remain married, could is a positive word. Cannot is a negative word. The Torah says they could be married. That's a positive. On a positive, you can't get Malchus. So the Gemara says, no. You're right. If we're just learning from this Pasuk alone, then it will remain positive. The problem is that there's another Pasuk that says, Achrayu Asherhu that, that's a negative, and that gives the woman Malchus, not this Pasuk. All that happens here is that the Kayan remains in the original Pasuk. This is a Pasuk that says the Chayv Malchus, and I want to say that, oh, here it says that, that willingly, you're not Chayv Malchus. No. The word Vihi says that by, it doesn't apply to Kayan. So erase this Pasuk of positive. So what, am I re, what do I remain with if I erase this Pasuk from uh, positive? I remain with the original Pasuk, which is a negative. And in a negative, I get Malchus. Says the Mishnah. Sponsored by, oh, hey, last time we had a Mishnah, it was a long time ago. It's over here. Sponsored by MD White Hill Group. Where we're diving for Rufus Yeshua, Shiduchim, for Klai Yisrael, and for our MDY family. Join us at MDY at Hillam.Avendav.com. Okay. Oh, it changed. Can't do double now? Okay, his wife, as a schos, for his wife and children. Who's, who's wife and children? Anonymous. Anonymous. Okay. <laughs> we should all have schos of our wives and children's. Children's. Says the Mishnah. Almana lekoin gadol, grush vachalus lekoin adioit, mina erisin, loyoichlu betruma. 
This is a phenomenal Chiddush. And that is that if you're not supposed to marry a Kayin because you happen to be a divorcee or a widow to a Kayin Gadol, what happens if they do get married? She becomes a Chalala. And a Chalala cannot eat Truma. But here's the Chiddush. Even before the marriage, they just got Erusin, some sort of engagement, whatever you want to call it, Erusin. She also becomes Aser to eat Truma. Over here, Rashi says we're talking about Abbas Kain, but later on, no, we're not talking about Abbas Kain. The point is that this woman, before she becomes a Chalala, she becomes Aser to eat Truma. So, Almar al Kain Gadol, Gerusha Vachalus al Kain Adit. These women, which, if they finish off the marriage, they become halalim and they're not allowed to eat truma. They're also to eat truma already beforehand because they're about to get married to this guy. They're not allowed to eat truma all the way from the beginning. Reb Lazar, Reb Shimon, Machshirin. Reb Lazar says that, listen, this is a big chiddush. Reb Lazar, Reb Shimon say that a Bas Yisrael, a, a Yisraelis who never ate truma in her life, she gets engaged to a Kayan. She's the, a divorcee. And she gets engaged to a Kayan. You hear this, Chiddush? Marty, hear this? She gets engaged to a Kayan. She's allowed to eat Truma today. Once they get married, she becomes a Chalala. She can't eat Truma. And before she even got engaged, she couldn't eat Truma. Because why? Because she's Israelis. But in between, as they're engaged, she can eat Truma. It's crazy. Oh. So that's a whole Rashi here. That, that the problem is that, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Ayn and Rashi. No, Almar al Kain goes, that's the first thing he says. But uh, that we have a problem of um, feeding the, the brothers in the house over there. Okay, fine. Zog to Mishnah. This armelu oynis garshu men anasuin psulois. These women who marry these koyhanim, they shouldn't marry them. They become halalim and they can't eat truma. So just because their husbands died and gave them a divorce, that's it. Doesn't help. They're gone for life. They're possible for truma. Mina eris, and this is also even a. This is a giant chiddush as well. Unbelievable chiddushim today. Mina eris, even a court. Listen to this, Marty. This you're gonna love. Reb Meiru says that when you're engaged, you can't eat truma because you're about to get married. And because you're about to get married, Al Shema Asid, you can't eat truma today. He'll admit that if the guy drops dead, the Kayan, before he had the ability, to, you get to eat truma. Because you never got married. The whole point is because you're going to get married, but it never happened. So, Mela, it doesn't pass alert. Says the Gemara, you know what? Your boy said, let's just stop over here. It's a, it, uh, you want me to go right there? I know, I know. Beis Hashem, live from marriage to stroll. You're off the hook until the summer. You don't have to set up the cameras anymore. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful zimmer. And Beis Hashem, I'll see you guys in Israel. When you come, don't forget to visit us in Ramah Shemesh.